Hello guys. Need a chainmail for a cosplay but don't want to link like a thousand rings together? Have a 3D printer to print it out? Or cut out craft foam? Well, I got your back. Here's a great alternative way to make fake chainmail by using knit fabric. Well, alright, let's get started. For this example, we'll be making the arm armor part of Gondo from God of War. It's a bit of a tongue twister actually. <laughs> To get started, you're going to need some sort of larger yarn knit fabric, preferably the pearl knit type, where it's bumpy. This type of fabric emulates the chainmail look the best. I got this blanket while being lost at IKEA called, excuse my Swedish, Ingabrida. As you can see, it comes in red, blue, pink, and white, which I went with for this cosplay. This step is optional, but personally, I recommend having fabric as a backing for your knit. This way, if you bend too much, the knit doesn't get stretched out in certain areas like the elbow. After I measured out the length of my arm, wrist, and bicep, I just drew the sleeve on the backing fabric. If you do it this way, make sure to add at least half an inch seam allowance, which is the space of fabric between your sew line and cut line. And now you pretty much have a sleeve pattern, which in fashion lingo pretty much means a sleeve template, transfer that shape onto the knit. Depending on your knit thickness, you might want to cut it out one at a time. But wait! Make sure you have your knit orientation correct. Always double check which direction or side your fabric is facing before you cut. You don't want to waste expensive fabric after all. After you finish cutting, have one backing fabric piece per knit piece, like this, and pin them down together. We're now going to roughly hand sew the knit and backing fabric together. The trick is to sew every little inch or so, so the thread doesn't show up on the knit side. Just pick it up a little bit like this, and just keep on going every inch. So once you're done, it's going to look something like this. Finally, for the painting stage. For this part, you're just going to need a sponge brush, black acrylic, this brand is from Apple Barrel, not sponsored, a cup of water, and also some sort of plastic sheet that you can paint on top of. Now, for this technique, it's special. You just drizzle it on there like chocolate syrup, just like so. You know, just have fun with it. And grab your brush, dunk it in some water. Don't get it confused with your coffee water. And then just dab it in there. Make sure to work in the acrylic into the knit. Just really soak it in because uh, this knit is a little thick, so make sure you get all the little crevices of white. You could also dye it, but I like this method better since the knit gets stiffer and also it's much less of a mess since I don't have to worry about the excess dye. So here it is completed after you finish soaking it in the acrylic with water. Uh, it, it'll be really wet, so I recommend just flipping it over every hour, a few hours or so, uh, but you could use a hairdryer too, that works. Oh, if you're wondering what that is, that's just Gondo's glowing horn parts I 3D printed and modeled, and now just drying with resin. I'll make a video about it later. Anyway, now that the black acrylic is completely dried, it's time to paint it over with gold, or silver, or whatever metallic paint you're going for. I'll be using this brand, excuse my French, but Atelier Interactive Acrylic in Rich Gold. This is a really rich metallic paint, as the name implies, 
and it's really thick and opaque. So even just using a little bit goes a long way. The technique is just like brushing your teeth. You put a little dab of it on your brush and with small strokes, just like this, on your knit, you just uh, brush it over, you know? So after this dries, I recommend doing one more layer so the paint really sticks out. Here's what it looks like with just one layer. And here it is with two layers. So it makes a big difference. This step is optional depending on the chainmail texture that you're looking for. But since Gondol's chainmail is pretty flat, I'll be going with this option, which is pretty much ironing out your knit. When ironing special fabrics, something like this, I also recommend having some scrap fabric like this muslin as a way to separate the iron from the fabric itself because you don't want to damage the iron. This is also a great technique in ironing very delicate fabrics but that requires ironing. So here's a quick difference between an ironed one and a non-ironed one. As you can see, the ironed one is pretty flat and smooth, while the other one is more chunky, you know? So it just depends on what kind of texture you're looking for. Also an optional step, but to keep things clean and tidy, and get these threads out of the way as you put your arm through the sleeve, I recommend also using at least a thin one-sided interfacing. If you're wondering what interfacing is, it's pretty much a piece of fabric that you can attach on the other side of the fabric, on the inside of the fabric pretty much, to make it stiffer. When I said one-sided interfacing, that means one side of it has glue, and you can see these tiny little beads on one side of the fabric where you can iron onto the fabric so it'll glue together, and that way it won't just fall out. So I just cut out two interfacing pieces that are the same shape as my sleeve and now I'm just gonna go ahead and iron it to my fabric. So make sure when you're ironing interfacing, you have the glue side, the little white bumpy side, make sure that's facing down onto the fabric because that little bumpy stuff is the glue. So you're gonna wanna use that on the bottom and have the smoother side on the top where you're gonna iron. I also recommend having muslin on top as well, just so, just in case you make a mistake and just a bit of glue doesn't get everywhere. When you're ironing on interfacing, make sure you don't use steam because all you're doing is just melting the glue with heat.
Nearly done, it's time to sew the edge. Since my fabric was so thick to pin, I just decided to roughly hand stitch it together. Now I'm just finally sewing the sleeves together. Since I finally used the sewing machine to put the sleeves together, I'm just taking out that hand stitch. And now all you have to do is just turn it inside out. And now for the finishing touches, I'm just pressing the seams, which pretty much means ironing out the seams so they look less puffy and cleaner. And here's the final product. It mimics the chainmail look pretty well, and I'm happy how it turned out. It's light, flexible, and durable, which will make it great for packing and for conventions. I'll be making a walkthrough for my build of Gondul, so I hope you're around for that. Please consider liking and subscribing with the notification bell, and thanks for tuning in. I'll see you later.